we are unsolid by sponsorship. This is a purely <laughs> editorial list. Yes, yes. Nobody pay us to do this. We're just doing it because we, we care about quantum computing. Please pay us. successfully push you to do another one for us and you begrudgingly put together a another hopefully fantastic list so in this top five we will be looking at commercial successes rather than research successes you're the gatekeeper with a key that will take us into the world of quantum computing so the wonderful world of quantum through the power of this radically new computation method we might be able to solve extremely difficult computational problems we might achieve instant communication it's probably going to ruin all of existing cryptography but it's going to create new uh, cyber defense that we can't probably even imagine yet but all of this is years probably decades away and today in quantum there are more questions than answers Shall we just get onto the list? We, we, we attempted to rate these companies by their observable impact, but this is not scientific in any way, so don't, don't, don't hold us to this. But number one, Google. In fairness to Google, um, the big G styles itself as an early adopter and spends a lot of resources on research, so it's no wonder it has become like one of the first big tech companies to really embrace the weird and wonderful world of quantum computing. And now let's talk about quantum supremacy. Back in 2019, Google published a paper in which it claimed it had achieved quantum supremacy. That means demonstrated a task in which a quantum computer would considerably outperform a classical computer. Uh, so Google designed a computational problem that would take 10,000 years to solve on the fastest supercomputer we have today, Summit, built by IBM for Oak Ridge National Labs. Um, so their algorithm could solve this problem in four minutes. In fairness to everybody else, not, not, not in fairness to Google, this is a question they came up themselves, right? And then they, it's a paper they published themselves. And I guess you and I are kind of marvel at their compute power. There are, there are some questions yet to be answered, right? I, I don't know whether that's something we should just say, say, okay, it's over, Google, you won. It's something that we kind of just say, okay, that's great, but I want to see a little more. Absolutely, 100%. Just like everything else in quantum computing, Google's announcement caused immediate controversy. Um, not everyone agreed that the experiment actually falls under the definition of quantum supremacy. And there are several projects running uh, trying to prove quantum supremacy like nothing ever happened, you know, including one funded by DARPA. DARPA is spending millions wow. on this. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, there's everything to play for. And uh, Google has uh, definitely, uh, you know, like uh, it earned the, the, the media coverage points. Mm, so to be continued on that one. Google will be watching you. Number two, IBM. Mm -hmm. So the big blue got in this list for creating IBM Q System 1, which was the world's first ever circuit-based commercial quantum computer. Again, launched in 2019. Like the machines at Google, this one requires absolute zero temperatures, but this one you can actually buy and run in your own quantum data center. This is what's different about System 1. It also... Sure gets an award, you're gonna like this, as the sexiest quantum machine. <laughs> Google's hardware looks very steampunky with copper piping, exposed fiber ca uh, cabling. IBM has none of that. It's a masterpiece of modern minimalism with its guts packed into an airtight glass cube with a sort of like a funnel coming from the top. And among other things, IBM is very interested in developing quantum programming tools and its offerings include something with a funny name, Kiskit. Kiskit is an open source framework for working with noisy quantum computers using Python scripts. And Python mm -hmm. is the most popular language on this planet. So this essentially enables anyone to experiment with quantum. Again, available in the cloud or yeah, if you have a couple of million to spare, you can buy your own. Piling on all the crowdsource, all the wisdom and ideas and kind of help do build this project together. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If you're interested in quantum, again, right now is the time to get in touch. Number three, Canada's D-Wave. D-Wave is the proof that you can build a quantum com company uh, completely from scratch. It was established back in 1999 when, when quantum was still young. Uh, it builds large, expensive systems that it's been selling to customers like NASA and Lockheed Martin. 
And at the end of last year, uh, D-Wave announced general availability of what it called the first quantum computer built for business. But we should mention that the uh, D-Wave's tech leadership is often contested. You see, while it sells systems of capable of running thousands of qubits at a time, its machines cannot be considered true quantum computers. Instead, they exploit something called quantum annealing. This makes quantum easier because these machines can work at room temperature, but while they are outperforming classical computers in some tasks, they are not suitable for some of the most exciting quantum use cases, right? So this is like, we're not going to get quantum entang entanglement through the annealing pathway. This might be the most, on our list, the most commercial friendly one. And you're, you're not going to experience the full power of the summit, but it's just good enough for for a company to run and, and, and take advantage of that compute power. Yes, yes. So they are one of the first people to offer businesses this the, 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 this pathway of, of actually saying we are doing quantum computing. This is what we've developed, you know, like we've got systems. And again, D-Wave is fantastic for complex combinatorial problems, traveling sales problems. That's, 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 that's its domain. It's, it's not going give, to give birth to, to, to things that actually feel like magic. Right, but it's, it does sound like there will be more companies who, who will start taking this approach because I think that's that makes sense financially. My my hunch is that we'll see more of that uh, from other companies. Absolutely, and and investors certainly agree. You know, like they got more than two hundred million in funding, and you are right in thinking this will be a hotly contested space because number four is Rigetti. Uh, a Silicon Valley-based startup notable for building Fab One, the ver world's first dedicated quantum chip foundry. Now, Rigetti is honest to God, balls to the wall, quantum computing company, so like quantum quantum gates, right? It, 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 it does need absolute zero, it does need low temperatures. And in 2019, they launched a quantum computing cloud housed in a specialized data center uh, and uh, giving access to their most powerful chip, which currently manages 32 qubits. And uh, one of Rigetti's primary goals, interestingly enough, is to demonstrate quantum supremacy. Hmm. Okay, so we've got a challenger that's going against Google and, and IBM alike. And uh, also, I have to note that their actual chips, you know, like the the, the, the pictures shown, shared with the media, uh, they look like very expensive jewelry. And if only I could get my hands on one of those, I would just wear it around my neck. Last, but absolutely, positively, certainly not least, is Intel. If we're talking about processors, we have to mention Intel, and the company is doing something interesting indeed. It is attempting to approach quantum with spin qubit processors that can be manufactured using its conventional foundry techniques. Now, Intel owns fabs. Intel's entire business is built around fabs and printing chips itself. So when it says, you know, like, haha, we figured out a way to print quantum chips using the same equipment, you really should start taking notice. The near-term goal is to put quantum in the hands of people. Intel's director for quantum hardware, Jim Clark, straight up told IEEE Spectrum recently, I would concede that today silicon spin quibits are not the most advanced quantum computing technology out there. A silicon spin quibit is roughly the size of one transistor. So this means Intel could potentially print circuits with millions of these underpowered, not quite mm. qubits, and soon. But again, these are more of an, an intermediary step for quantum computing rather than the ultimate goal. Final remarks, because of, of of course, uh, AI and quantum and the relationship between the two, and you know, like the things that quantum computing can contribute to AI, is 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 is, is still very much in its infancy, and it's a rapidly developing th field. But Google, you know, they they have a common organization, they have an AI quantum organization, and other people are starting to take notice. And at the moment, thinking is, you could probably accelerate specific parts of machine learning or network neural networks. But uh, uh, yeah, we can we can look at it with interest. Again, it will take years, possibly decades, to develop. But quantum should become very very useful for AI. That's crowd also open source our, our our video and our ideas and say, well, listen, if you feel like we're, there's something that's missing on the list, well, write to us. It's the best way to collect feedback, right? Usually, like from personal experience, whenever you have a top five or top ten and you rate some vendors, there's going to be plenty of pissed off people. Given that AI and quantum are so close together. There's an AI summit in September. There's also a quantum computing summit. They're having it together. So watch out for any new announcements. Go to ibusiness.com and, and you will see all the information you need.